My first response, and I can't, I can't do it, is, well, then you never will. What's up, guys? My name is Rob, and this is Rob on the Run podcast, a running podcast for all healthy lifestyles. And today we have a very special guest, a person that I know personally as well. I met him in the Houston Striders, if I'm not mistaken, for the first time. Uh, Hayden, how are you doing today? Good, man. How are you? I'm doing great, man. Great, great to have you. Uh, how's how's the running going? Did you come out? Did you have a run today or, or today's a day off? No, man. I ran this morning. Just easy miles trying to uh, build a little bit, but uh, just maintaining Awesome, awesome, and and uh, are you running in the morning uh, because of the heat or or what's going on there? Yeah, it's yeah because of the heat, <laughs> but more so because I just I, I enjoy my afternoons. Sweet, uh, sweet, always, yeah. Always been an afternoon runner. Uh, yeah, and up until here recently, I rolled over into the mornings. Okay, okay. So so you're you're used to this Texas heat then? Oh yeah, born and raised. Oh my God! I I grew up in uh in California, so uh, when I first moved here, man, I could not believe people could actually be outside for more than five minutes, man. It's it's ridiculous how hot it is, and I've been living here, uh, man. I think it's been twenty years, and I still can't get used to it, dude. I cannot. I am a five thirty in the morning runner in the summer. Uh, I like I like it's still hot. It, it, it's hot and humid still, but at least it, the sun's not pounding. But I am kind of transitioning a little bit to where I'm having a couple runs in the afternoon, just because I know that that heat is going to help me when I go in in the winter and fall time to go run mm -hmm. these races. I, I'll be much faster, you know. So, uh, but I commend you guys that do it. I have a good friend of mine. Her name's Crystal. She literally runs every day at twelve midday, and the only reason why is because that's the only time she has to run. You know, she w works, she's a full-time mom and I could see the difference from her when she started doing this. She actually qualified to Boston. That's how good she got, man. She wow. is a, an amazing runner. So yeah, kudos to you guys. I'm, I'm trying to get there, uh, but, uh, it's hard, man. It's, it's very, very hard. So you're, you're born and raised from here in Houston or in Texas in, in general. So I'm from Beaumont, okay. uh, about an hour and a half east of Houston. Okay. Um, okay. I grew up there just trying to uh I moved to Houston about two years ago. So, okay. okay. Uh, coming, I guess three years ago now. So. Okay. Awesome, awesome. And how long have you been running, man? About a little over three years. I started April of 2021. Okay. That's uh, awesome. Right after the pandemic, just kind of <laughs> needed to make a change, started running. So so were you an athlete and something else or, you know, running was the first option you found that you might be good at or, or that you might be able to do it? Or how did you choose running from all the other stuff that you could do to, to do fitness? So my brother was a um, triathlete runner um, okay. and, and I was, I was uh, trying to find something to fill my time. Yeah. And he said, man, you should go for a run. I told him there was no way I would ever run a day in my life. <laughs> oh my so god! I started out a quarter of a mile gasping for air, <laughs> and I said, "There is no reason anybody should be doing this for fun." <laughs> I feel you. I laugh, dude, because it's exactly how I started. Um, I I used to you know go to the gym and yeah I used to run a mile or two, but you're in in inside the air conditioning and the treadmill really helps your pace you know it it because it, it's continu continuously moving it's not stopping, mm -hmm. so uh, when I met uh, when I met my uh, my fiance she got me into running because she she invited me to do a uh, the minime run the one that they do here in Houston, mm -hmm. and I got the first medal and I think that's what really got me addicted to it. But before, dude, if 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 I had to run from here to the next block, I'd I'd be dying. I'd be dying. As a matter of fact, I think if the cops were chasing me, I probably would just tell them, you know, just <laughs> just take me, man. There's no reason to even try to run away from you guys. I I, I suck at running, so I'm not gonna be able to outlast you all. So I hear you, man. And it's crazy how it becomes. At least in my perspective, when I started running, I hated it. 
I hated it, hated it, hated it until I started, I guess because I did it so many times, I, I started getting a little bit of endurance and then I started liking it, you know, and of course the medals for me, the medals is what does it for me. So when I got that first medal, of course, I, I needed to run another one and another one and another one. And as you can tell, half, half of these medals are mine. And then the other half are my fiance. So I'm, I'm all about medals, man. So uh, so you started running, you couldn't do it for, for much. When, when did you really realize that, you know, you had potential to be able to run like a 5k first? So I started out, like I said, a quarter of a mile at a time, mm -hmm. um, you know, and then I went to half mile. Okay. Um, and whenever I say I ran like a half a mile, I would run a half a mile, half a mile and I would be done like <laughs> it wasn't half a mile walk a little bit another half mile it was like half a mile done <laughs> so uh you know and i think a lot of it had for runners who are beginning getting into their running yeah um, i think a lot of runners think i need to go out here and run as hard as i can yes you know yes. and that's that's where it becomes a problem is because you just you run mm -hmm. and you think faster I run, the faster I'm going to do whatever I'm trying to do. And it's yeah. not the case. Yeah. It takes yeah. the fun out of it. Yeah. So, yeah. um, you know, it took me a couple months. So I started running in April, mm -hmm. my first, I guess 5k or 10, uh, 5k was in June. Okay. Um, I ran one of the Houston running company races. Okay. Um, out at their warehouse, um, uh, during COVID, they had a lot of their races being hosted at their warehouse. Okay. So I ran one of their races there, and I, it, it was fun. Uh, <laughs> you know, was, I didn't know any different, didn't know anybody, just moved to Houston, mm -hmm. uh, started meeting other people, started meeting new friends. Yeah. Went to a run club. And then just kind of everything fell into place. So after you started running, you did your 5K. Um, uh, when did you now, you know, that you like to run, you, you know, made some friends, like you said, best way to do it is a run club. So I, I agree. Um, when when did you go from there into like the longer distances? When, when did you feel comfortable to the point where uh, you were running, you know, a half, a half marathon? So my first half was October. Um, I guess six months after I'd started running. Oh, uh, wow. So I ran uh, Houston half in October. Okay. okay. Um, that year mm -hmm. didn't really know what to expect. I'd never ran that far. Mm -hmm. uh, just kind of eased in, mm -hmm. and it was fun until about mile eight nine. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought this is measurable, but this is so much fun. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I finished the half. Then I was like, maybe I can do a little better. Maybe I could, you know, maybe, maybe I could do it and feel better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, doing better is different for so many different people. Some people just yeah. want to feel better doing the same time some people want to go faster you know yeah. so and that's what i love about the running community is you know it's everybody's in it for their own reasons yeah and my reason might not be the same as your reason your reason might not be the same mm -hmm. your fiance's reason everybody's yeah. reason's different but everybody comes together as yeah. one yeah i agree i agree and uh uh I've had several guests and even when you talk to people uh, in a running club it that's the first thing that comes up, the running community. And you listen to, you know, the elite athletes and the professional athletes, and they even talk about the running community. It's it's amazing how how a, a community of runners can make you change your mind about a sport. You know, um, me personally, um, I didn't think I was able to run a half. You know, I ran mine in uh, maybe about eight, 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 eight or nine months after I started running. And I was so, I just, I just couldn't see myself doing it. And I started going to a run group in Austin. Um, and I just started picking on people's brains. Like, what do you do? Like I'm, I've 
how much they would ask me, how much have you ran? Honestly, six miles. And they're like, well, okay, you're halfway there. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're halfway there. But I was like, I'm so afraid that I'm just not going to be able to do it. Six miles to 13 uh, is, is such a big difference. Um, and the, the, what the community always helps you, like they help you with what you need, you know, like you, like my, at that point, my goal was just to finish, you know, just to see if I was able to do it one and two, if I liked it, you know, because I'm the type of person that I, I really do strongly believe you got to try it to find out if you like it, you know, and if you don't like it, you don't have to do it again, you know, simple as that, you know, and so you know, the running community again helped me out, motivated me, uh, told me what to do, what not to do. And little by little, you know, I felt more confident to the point where when I ran my first half, I felt miserable. Don't get me wrong. I felt horrible. I felt like a car hit me and probably ran back, reverse and hit me again just <laughs> to make sure I was done, you know. But I finished. And just like you said, like I, I got I had that itch. OK, it hurt. But I liked it. But now the next thing, can I do better? You know, and that's that's where the little itch started for me. And I guess me and you have a little bit in common because you had that itch. It sounds like it, you know. So it what happened after that first half? Like what what went through your head? What what did you think about the run? How did you feel? What what happened? So so after the half, um, you know, I, I Houston half's one bigger. Mm -hmm. uh events in houston so yeah. Yeah. you know everybody was there and it was like camaraderie i mean all the camaraderie all yeah the, yeah you know, everybody hanging out everybody mm -hmm. um telling each other you know congratulating each other it didn't matter if they were <laughs> the last finisher or the first finisher you oh, know yeah. it's still still you ran 13 you still ran the distance so, yeah 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 you know seeing all these runners just support each other really made me realize how strong the running community is. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was, I wasn't feeling that great coming off my first half, <laughs> you know, but I was, I was happy that I had done it, that I had finished, yeah. um, you know, and I, I knew that, that potentially I could do better, one better. Um, oh yeah. You know, and everybody was so supportive of how I finished and, you know, it's just, you meet all these people and the friends, I mean, they're friends for life. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And you mentioned uh, your running club. Is this uh, the Houston Striders, the one that you first met or what, what, which one was the, the first run group that you, you found once you moved and, and you started, you know, your distance uh, running. So I started out at Vaughn running club. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, they're in Rice Village. So mm -hmm. um, I started out with them met some really good friends a um, couple of the officers there were you know really man we became very close okay and that, that was just you know that, that was who I leaned on mm -hmm. um, I didn't know anybody we became friends started hanging out a little bit and you know I, I would say every week, occurrence I, I was a recurring member at that club at that group <laughs> every week and uh it didn't take didn't take no no time to get to know everybody that was there okay that, yeah I've, I've been there once unfortunately my my work schedule kind of makes it a little hard for me to make it over there just because i live on the east side of of houston so i i actually technically i'm not even part of houston i'm on the outskirts and so for us to make it from here to where Bond does the run, it takes about 45, 50 minutes, you know, and we don't mind. I never mind making the drive when it's a really good group. And I love that group. The couple of times I've gone, very, very helpful people, very nice people. And I love their routes. I think the route that they have there for the people to run is is very, very nice. But yes, I, I, I agree with that group. They're very uh, uh, positive people. Uh, hopefully in the near future, I'm able to go again and, 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 uh, and run with them. Maybe I'll, I'll bump into you for sure. <laughs> yes, sir. But that, man, uh, that, that now, how did you meet the Houston Striders? Cause I feel like you're, you, you've been more, more active with them more than anything, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, um, I, so somebody, seems like somebody invited me out for a Saturday morning long run, um, 
And so I, I joined, ended up going out with them. Uh, you know, they, they had water and Gatorade and everything <laughs> set out. And I'm like, wow, this is really cool. Yeah. So then I become a member of the Striders, um, you know, and that was uh, – that was kind of my turning point of, you know, getting a little more – into the striders um, okay you know I, i'm still kind of more solo runner um you know I, other than here recently running with morning groups but houston striders has helped me um you know because they, they have their weekend long runs mm-hmm. um and they're their largest club largest group in houston um i I would actually say they're probably one of the largest group in texas man because i've seen i've gone to the the saturday long runs um the one that they start at memorial park Mm -hmm. uh because i know you there's another one that starts a little bit earlier i think right but those Mm -hmm. those those guys are fast i heard that they're they're the the slowest one is about 8 30 or something like that so uh yeah i i I, i'm 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 not there yet so (laughs) But it takes time. that group, but I, I, I've gone to the other group and it's always a, a nice, uh, big group of, of people that, you know, when they saw me for the first time, they knew I was new, a new guy and they, uh, they all introduced themselves to me and they asked me, what is your pace? That way we can, you know, get you with somebody that you can go with and, you know, learn the routes and whatnot. But yes, uh, I, I, I honestly, I think that they're probably one of the largest groups in Texas. Obviously, Team Beef is a different story. You know, those those guys mm-hmm. are national. But mm-hmm. um in Texas, I I honestly do feel that they're they might be one of the bigger groups. And they are a bunch of cool people. They they really I think when you're looking for if you're a serious runner where you want to find a a a, a group that will help you uh train, you know, I think that's that's them, you know, because there's other groups. Um for example, I'm part of the freaks, a uh, great bunch of people. But, I, you know, I know that that I will probably go there more because of, you know, the the, the vibes and, and, and you know, the people, which is amazing. Nothing, mm-hmm. nothing against that. But once I start training, I really want to find a group that will, you know, align to what I'm trying to do, you know, for example. Mm-hmm. And I think Houston Striders is one of those 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 groups. So, yeah, definitely. Um great bunch of people great organization and and as a matter of fact they're the ones that sponsor the houston half right mm-hmm. yes um yeah they are uh it's their uh, it's their race so okay they're yeah. they're, they're the ones who who organize it um, yeah yeah and 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 you know one thing going to the houston half they have one of the nicest medals um th- that i've had man they are amazing they're they're very very well made and and kudos for them and that's one of the reasons why i do it october racing for me is not usually a time for me to race because it's still a little too hot Mm -hmm. but for that medal i i will dehydrate Uh, it's okay (laughs) (laughs) it's okay but you know going back to your 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 start you know you've already ran a half uh when did you go from that to you know just doing a full marathon what what Which one was your race and how did you do it? So I was still, you know, I'm still new. Uh, I went from October the half, January Chevron, um, the marathon. Yeah. Um, and so I knew, you know, after the half, I started putting in some more mileage. Mm-hmm. Um, I started kind of doing a little research on some coaches Okay. Um, and then about three, you know, my mileage was already where it needed to be. So I, it, I still was building, um, you know, after, after the half, Mm -hmm. I had some 18s in there, um, you know, leading into Houston, but, uh, uh, I hired my coach, started working with my coach about three weeks before Houston, uh 22 okay so just before the race i hired him on and you know he told me i remember our conversation he was like man i i can't take credit for anything that you do through this race (laughs) now i can help you in the future yeah 
I may be able to help you in the future, you know, but just know that anything that I do during, through this race is not because of me. It's because of everything <laughs> that you've done. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, we'll see how it, how it turns out. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, here it is. I've been with him for more than two, two and a half years, I guess. Oh, wow. Wow. So, and three weeks, man. Why, why three weeks? Why did you decide to get a, a trainer three weeks before the race? That's, so <laughs> that's crazy. I, <laughs> I'd been looking and then I, I really don't know why, but <laughs> um, I know if I didn't, I wasn't going to. Yeah. And so it just seemed like everything fell into place. You know, mm -hmm. I had a conversation with him um, just to kind of see if, you know, what I was trying to do and what he was, I really didn't even have any goals. Yeah. I just wanted to run a marathon and see what, what fell after that. Yeah. But um, so I talked to him. He was like, man, I'm, you know, we're, uh, we just, everything just felt right. So I, I went ahead and moved forward with, with him. Um, and then I ran Houston. And, and what was the time? 319, uh, 41. 319. So, That's what an average of what, um, like seven, it was right around 730, seven, yeah, 740 maybe. Wow. Um, okay. But you, like you said, you had already started training. You just decided mm -hmm. to get a trainer three weeks. So you already had some sort of um, uh, training, per se, under your mm -hmm. belt. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. But still, man, for your first marathon, 319, wow. Is that when you kind of realized, hey, I, I, I can do some damage here? That's, yeah. So that was kind of my start. And I knew, I knew when I ran that that you know i was capable of maybe doing something more than i expected and what at this point you because you did mention your brother was a triathlete at this point mm -hmm. did you see that your running was at par with your brother or it actually already had completely uh overlapped whatever he was doing no um i he was much at the time he was much faster than than anything i had ever even thought of Okay. Um, so he, he had actually, he had actually stopped racing by the time I started running. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, so injury or just, just see, he didn't, he, run. he got hit on bike. Uh, oh, Ooh. Yeah, yeah. He got hit on bike. I mean, it, he walked away from it. Yeah. But it scared him enough that he hung the bike up. Man, that's crazy. Uh, someone didn't, I'm guessing I'm going to go and take a guess. Somebody did, did not, was not, what uh looking at the road probably hey they didn't stop oh my god that yeah, that is so threw. sad man that is so sad my brother got hit by a car he he's never been a runner but he got hit up by a car he was literally uh walking on it on an intersection a pedestrian intersection and the dude never saw him he hit him he looked saw that he moved took off that and, and it, it it definitely hits home. My brother made it out. He's still he's still good. He's still with us. He's uh he has you know some 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 definitely injuries that will linger forever. But mm -hmm. you know he's still around. But it it when I hear stuff like that, it really makes me really mad. Just because you know it it things shouldn't be like that, man. The things should not be like that. And and I'm glad your brother is still around and. Uh, um, uh, it's kind of sad that he's not doing it, but you know, I totally understand. I totally understand why, man. He, he, mm -hmm. it's sometimes the risk of, of it happening again is just far too much for, for him to be out there. But, uh, I'm glad he's there, man. I'm glad he's still alive and, and he's still good. So good for him. Yeah. So, so now you, you're the only runner. You're the only person. Um, what was your next race after Houston, the, the Chevron? So after Houston, um, I ran Brazos 50K. Oh, okay. So you went from a marathon <laughs> to a, 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 a trail, like an ultra. Wow. Yes. Okay. Uh, so I ran 50K in April following the marathon. Okay. Um, and, you know, we – that was fun. But after that, I kind of figured, oh, well, I'm going to go back to <laughs> – <laughs> under the 50k distance okay okay so it didn't, um, it didn't go too well as planned I, i'm guessing 
It went really well. You know, I, I definitely ran solid. Um, it just wasn't, wasn't, wasn't really my thing. Okay. Okay. Um, so it's I didn't kind of one of those it. things that you did it. You wanted to do it to see the experience, but it just it it did it didn't it didn't it didn't, it didn't impress you per se. <laughs> yeah. So I'm I'm definitely more of a road runner than a trail runner. Okay. I've done okay. several trail races, but I, I really enjoy the road running. Uh, the trail running community is amazing. Yes. They're so laid back. Mm-hmm. I mean, the running community is laid back. But the trail running community is just that much more <laughs> laid back. Yeah, um, yeah. But it just wasn't, you know, for the mar- for the races, 5Ks, 10Ks, you know, you've got people lined up on both sides of the street mm-hmm. that are cheering mm-hmm. you on. Mm-hmm. And I, I enjoyed that more um, than, uh, than the, the trail. Yeah, race. it's it's or, it's harder to see people, and and I get you, I get you one hundred percent. I'm I'm kind of like that my, myself. Um, I like races where you have that that crowd support, especially mm. when you hit that one you know race that um you don't the the cards don't align per se, and you just need somebody to give you that pick me up, you know. And mm-hmm. and I, I don't feel that when you're doing trails because of you're you're in in the middle of nowhere or you're in the middle of a of a trail and not a lot of people go up there and and you know cheer you on so i i get it i get it i'm 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 curious to do one i've not done a 50k which is something that i want to try just like you just to see how it works out mm-hmm. but i'm i i know for a fact even without me doing it i'm more of a road racer too i i i enjoy uh everything that comes with a road race the 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 people the volunteers the 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 the, the people yelling the signs for example the, the people that have those wacky signs you know everything all that makes me makes me happy you know so i i hear you and it's and it's and it's awesome to that that um that you like that you tried it i mean that again that's that's the most important you tried it you didn't like it move on kind of kind of thing you know mm-hmm. so so you know now that you're a marathoner how do you still see yourself doing smaller races or do you find yourself more concentrated on the marathon now? So I, I find myself more concentrated on the marathon distance, but I really enjoy the short distance racing as well. So okay. the shorter distances I, I, I enjoy quite a bit. So every chance that I get to run short distance, 5k, 10k, Mm-hmm. Um, I'm typically gonna run with it. Nice, nice. And what's what's your 5k uh, PR? Right around 17. Oh, nice, man. Woo. That's what like a little bit over six minutes, right? Six. It, like, no, it's it's right around like five, five twenty, five oh maybe. So for every mile that I run, you're you're almost running two miles, dude. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? I th- I think you're gonna have to wear one of my bibs and just pretend, <laughs> you know, you're me or something, man. That's that's crazy, man. That's awesome, but it's awesome, man. That's 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 great. Um, yeah, I'm I, I've been having a hard time breaking the 23 minute mark. That's my fastest, which is uh, right around 740, 745, something like that. Um, but I I, I, I find myself more concentrated on 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 full marathons right now, mm-hmm. but. You know, I, I, I've been taking more advice from all of my fellow runners and people that I've had here already on the podcast uh, to where I think I, I, I've been too laser focused on one thing when you can, you know, there's nothing wrong if you put that aside for a little bit and concentrate on other goals, you know. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, um, I love I love the marathon. It hurts like hell. I feel horrible. Um, but. I, I I like I told my fiance we were talking about this because I'm over here I'm I'm about I'm already started my training for Berlin I'm gonna do the Berlin Marathon and she tells me because I have that one and then I have for sure the the two that I'm gonna do that I'm I'm already committed is this one Berlin and of course Chevron because I do the the team catapult um um uh, thing so I I raise money for team catapult and she tells me I want to do CIM uh, California International Marathon which is in uh, December. So mm-hmm. technically I have, I would have a full marathon, September, December, and then January. 
right? And she tells me, why do you do this to yourself? <laughs> you know? Um, and I tell her, it's just like when you tell someone you're such a drama queen, but uh, the opposite way. I just mm -hmm. enjoy the pain. I really do. I think that's that's what it happens. I enjoy feeling pain. I enjoy running and feeling, you know, how you feel when you're like in mile 23, 24, that you're like, oh, my God, I I can easily quit right now, but I'm, I'm not going to do it, you know. And I enjoy the pain. So that's why I find myself doing more marathons than anything else. But I think after this, this after after Chevron, I think what I'm going to start doing is concentrating on trying to improve my times on my 5K, my 10K, because I know I can do better I, on those as well. So mm -hmm. definitely, I, I I'm I'm kind of like that with you. But yeah, marathon is is my, my, my the love my new love of my life per se, yeah. man. I I just enjoy it. I enjoy it a lot. Yeah. So. Um... You know, I, I really will use the summertime mm -hmm. for the shorter race, shorter distance racing. Yeah. Um, you know, I've got Chicago coming up in October. Oh, nice. So I'll through this summer, I probably won't be um, racing as much short distance stuff as I did mm -hmm. last year. But um, yeah, I always, I always try to keep the legs turning over. So even through my marathon training i'll i'll throw a 10k in there okay uh, every you know one maybe one a month just oh, to, nice. just to get the legs really kind of turning over some good um uh, some good kick you know keep the legs yeah. feeling fresh yeah 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 and and this is your first time doing uh chicago this is my second time oh second time and what was what was your time last time 314 that was uh 2022 Okay. So, no, I think did I do it in 22? Man, I don't remember. I did it once. It was my first marathon. I did it that one year. Maybe, maybe this will help you to know if it was 22. It was that one year. It was actually pretty hot. That was, was the year. That was 21. 21. Okay, that was 21. Yes, I did that one in 21, man. And um, I I had a, a coach. I I was I trained with my friend Crystal, she, the one I was telling you about. Um, and by mile 11, dude, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie. I cramped up so bad. And from 11 all the way to 26, I limped in there, ran a little bit, you know, whatever I had to do. And you know, you know, right, right after you pass mile 26, when you do the final turn, there's a slight incline, <laughs> right? And it's not uh -huh. that big. Honestly, it's not a big incline. It, it's maybe 20, 30 feet or something like that. And then you do another turn, which is the straightaway to finish the race. Mm -hmm. I remember getting to that point, man. And I saw the incline and I don't know what happened. I guess it was just my body shutting down. I literally just put my hands in my knees and was like, just like that. And somebody came up to me. One of the volunteers came up to me. He's like, do you need a wheelchair? And I mean, you already, you've already done 26 miles or a little bit even more than 26 miles because it's only like 400 meters after that. Um, and I remember looking at him and I'm not even going to say the words that came out, but they were pretty bad. <laughs> and, I, and I just told him, what do you think? Why would I want a wheelchair when I'm like... 400 meters away. I am dead tired. Just leave me alone. I'm going to cross that, that I'm going to cross that finish line. And the guy just looked at me and he's like, and he told me what crowd support, exactly what we we're talking about. He told me, you, you get up and finish that race. That's all I needed to hear, man. I said, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I cussed you out. I, <laughs> I'm just tired, but thank you. That's all I needed to hear. So I got up and finished my race, man. But it, with all the the cramping and everything, I finished it like in five hours and four, 40 minutes, which I was so devastated, man. I was so devastated because I had done such a great training block. Like I was so pumped because the first time I was able to make uh, 22 miles, I think my last long run was 22 miles and I finished it and I felt great. Like I felt pretty tired, but I felt good. I anemically, I felt good. So I was, I was like, that's it. I'm I'm good to go. I'm ready to go. And then to have these, you know, little issues, you know, it, it really made me very upset, you know. But then I thought about it, you know, you're a marathoner, you finished, you should be happy for that. So it, it definitely changed my mindset, man. 
But given given that, you know, um, talking about, you know, having issues, have you ever had that one marathon or race? It doesn't have to be a marathon, but any race where you felt like that, that you had a great training plan, you you it went 100 right. And then the day of the race, it just, you know, it wasn't there. So <clears throat> I had a, like probably you know, I, I probably had four or five races that went that way. Um, I've, you know, and I remember, um, so Eugene last year, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I, I had a really solid training block, um, mm -hmm. got to Eugene, took off strong, felt good. Legs started cramping up. Oh, I started fighting that. I still, I finished, I still finished. I was happy with my finish, but okay. knowing what I was training for and mm -hmm. the race that I ran, it just, you know, I had probably, like I said, I probably had five marathons. Um, and I think a lot of it was nutrition. Okay. Um, uh, you know, not enough electrolytes. Uh, I was taking a, a nutrition, I was taking gels that didn't have any sodium in them. Mm. And so it just seemed like I was good up to about a half. And then quads would start hurting. Calves would start hurting. Yeah. Hamstrings would give out. Everything got tight. And then before I know, I'm hunched over on the side of the street, <laughs> yeah. sizing the calves out, and then I'm mm -hmm. walking to – as far as I can until I decide I can run maybe a little bit. Yeah. 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 That's, uh, that sounds, that sounds like Chicago for me. Um, and that's, that's when I realized that, um, um, someone told me, Oh, you must be a salty runner. And I'm like, are you trying to say I'm, I'm, I'm a pissed off runner or what? <laughs> you know, that was my first reaction. I was like, what do you mean salty? I'm not salty. Maybe I'm salty because of my time, but I'm not a salty person. <laughs> and he, she's like, no, 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 no. It means that you, when you run, you probably lose more sodium than, you know, a regular person or another, mm -hmm. a different runner. You know, every runner is different, you know, so some have that issue and you probably do. And she, she explained to me what to do, what to carry, uh, like the salt tabs or you know mm -hmm. stuff like that and ever since i've i've never had any problems with with you know uh you know with the sodium part you know but um yeah it, it and it and you live and you learn and 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 you got to be happy with with your results at the end of the day you know so uh kudos to you that you were able to still get a good time and and just for the sake of finding out what was your time 304 304 and you were mad <laughs> <laughs> i wasn't so that's what i said i still ran a really good race yeah yeah just knowing what i had trained at oh yeah yeah and, and knowing where i was what i was capable of it just seemed like the race wasn't on par you know with yeah. with where my training was well and and i get you i i'm just i'm just you know pulling your leg but uh -huh. I, I get you because um um if you did 304 just imagine what you would have been if you didn't have all those little issues where you had to, you know, massage your <clears throat> calf, all these little issues. You probably would have bro broken uh, uh, a three hour, you know, less than three mm -hmm. hours, you know. So, yeah, I get you. And that's that's I think that's a competitive side with most runners uh, when when you can see that you could have done much better. It really stays there for a while. You know, I, I always I always tell my friends we're kind of like like a professional basketball player or a professional athlete when they see that they're so close to the championship and they can, they know what they needed to do different to get there. It, it really haunts them. You know, it really haunts them until the next time where they actually, you know, become champions or whatever. And mm -hmm. in your case, I'm pretty sure you were at three or four, but you knew you could have probably done less. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing that's not the last time you've done it. That's not. And what what was uh, your last your 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 the other result was it better? So since Eugene, uh -huh. um, I ran New York. Okay, I got sick the day before the race. Oh my god! <laughs> Saw a good training, everything was on point, and then got sick the day before the race. Oh right, my god! Seventeen. Um, I ran Houston in January. Okay. Uh, I ran two forty seven. Oh wow! Um, 
so I took a 17 minute PR and it was, you know, it was cause I'd been chasing sub three hours mm -hmm. and I'd never, I had just, I knew I could, I knew I could, I knew I could. And then mm -hmm. my, my PR was three Oh four. And I ended up running 247 in Houston. Wow. That's awesome. And this is the the last Houston we just had this year? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, awesome. Awesome. And I I did see that you ran we ran St. Louis. Was that a that was a half, right? It was a full. It was a full. So, and you actually uh you actually placed, right? Yeah, so I I placed uh second age group. I was 10th overall. Um, oh wow. I I PR'd there. Okay. Uh, so I ran two forty five twenty nine. Okay. Um, of course, it was hilly. Conditions were hot. Yeah, you know, I, I'm I'm happy with the way oh, yeah. that I ran that race for sure. I, I um, yeah, I can imagine, man. Congratulations! I did see that on your feed, and and um, I was like, man, that's awesome that uh, representing Houston. I I always I always like to see people from Texas in general when they go out there and and race uh. A race outside of texas and they they they, they kind of bring in the gold per se you know so mm -hmm. that, that makes me very proud to see that um but that's awesome dude and and i didn't even know it was that hot like uh you you i saw your pictures man some pictures they posted <laughs> you seem like you were nice and chill man it, it definitely didn't look like it was it, it was affecting you for sure yeah it was it was 67 at the start mm -hmm. uh like 80 80 85 humidity oh wow it had rained all day the day before. Oh, that so just it makes was, it worse. Yeah. 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 And it was it was brutal. I was drenched. You know, you always know whenever you're going to a marathon uh -huh. and it's like mile twelve and you're still running and not sweating. Yeah. It's gonna be a good day. Yeah. But yeah. 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 If you're sweating and you're completely drenched by mile two. Yeah. You know, oh you might God. be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure, man. And something else that just recently I saw on, on your feed, on your story is your, 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 um, your weight loss journey. Can you tell us a little bit about that, man. First of all, congratulations, man. That, that is awesome. I saw those pictures and I'm going to be honest, man. I'm going to be 100% honest. I always thought you were as fit as you look right now. So when I saw that picture, I'm like, this is Photoshop. This can't be <laughs> this guy. It can't not be this guy. But tell us, tell us about your weight loss journey because it's it's amazing, man. So um, before I started running, I was like 230. Okay. Um, and I wasn't any taller than I am now. <laughs> <laughs> so I was much heavier. Um, you know, and I, I, I knew that something needed to change. I just, I woke up tired, was tired all day. I, I felt, I did not feel like I, I, I knew I was capable of more than what I was giving myself. Okay. You know, um, so I started out, like I said earlier, I, I started running a little bit here and there. Mm-hmm. Um, change the diet a little bit, you know, and one thing led to another, led to another, led to another. Here I am running marathon, 5Ks, 10Ks, halves, marathons. Um, and, you know, I, you don't even realize how much you're changing until you look mm -hmm. back. Yeah. And, you know, looking back, it's like, wow, I've, I've lost 70 pounds. And wow. in about three and a half years. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. And 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 I I love stories like these, man, because uh, I don't know about you if you've ever had a a someone come up to you or or you hear someone talking and they're they say, I'm not gonna be I can't do this, I can't do that, I can't, I I can't lose all this weight. It's impossible, I'm too old, all the excuses, you know. And when there's stories like that of like yours, it's 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 amazing, man. It's amazing. And I hope someone out there sees this video and 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 sees, you know, your weight loss journey and motivates them to do something. Because like you said, when you were at 230, you weren't probably running, you weren't probably doing much, you know, you probably just, you know, uh sitting, watching TV and just letting your good years go to waste, you know? Mm -hmm. And and I love that. I love it. I just love those stories because 
it motivates even me. You know, I'm I'm not in my ideal weight to where I could run uh, faster or maybe be be better at running. But that motivates me to make a change, you know, because if you can do it, why can I? I can't do it, you know, mm -hmm. and I hope someone sees that and gets motivated because, man, it's it's I saw those pictures and I was like, wow, that's that's amazing. That's that's good for you. That's what the first thing I said. Good for you. And now I can understand this guy that runs super fast. Um Man, it's it's that that's got to be honestly that's got to be something that really opens up even your eyes. Seeing yourself at two thirty and now running two forty marathons, like come on, that that's that's got that, that's got to make you feel pretty good. It's you know it's it's so surreal still, like just just looking back and whenever I see people who are struggling mm -hmm. and you know they're they're getting to a point of discouragement and they're like. Mm -hmm. I just can't do it. I can't do it. Yeah. Well, my first response to I can't, I can't do it is, well, then you never will. Because if you can't do it mentally, you can, mm -hmm. you're not going to. Yeah. And yeah. you know, you don't, you don't go from A to B with nothing in between. Oh yeah. You can do anything you set your mind to. And all it takes is just a little bit of change. You know, you yeah. don't have to change every, you don't have to change your entire lifestyle. Yeah. Eventually, more so than not, if you start with one thing, mm -hmm. everything else will fall into place. But yeah, you know, um, I love, I love helping people. Whenever they, you know, people come to me all the time, and they're like, "Look, I need, I don't know what to do," and I'm like, "Well, oh, <laughs> you know, do this, this, and this. Yeah. This is well, this is what worked for me." Uh huh. You know. Um, yeah. And there's things that I, I don't know the answer to, but. You know, I, I love I love helping people, and that's what keeps me moving forward is striving to be the absolute best I can be, mm -hmm. and also being able to help others. Well said, man. Well said, and and uh, you know, and and when I started, it's funny that you say that because I, when I started my Instagram, my running journey, um, a lot of people, a lot of the. I guess negative people will, will DM me and say, why do you put your runs? Why do you do this? Why do you put these things? Like it's all for the clout or whatever they want to call it. And because I'm too old to even understand those words, um, <laughs> you know, but um, I don't do it for that. And I tell them, I don't, I, I started my Instagram because I wanted to document myself to have something, an idea from where I started to where I'm at now, you know, mm -hmm. but in the process of me posting something, if I can motivate somebody, if someone sees this and says, hey, this guy did it, let me try it. I, 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 if he can do it, I'm sure I can do it. Then that, that is a victory for me and for the person that did it. But, you know, that's, that's, that's how, why I do things. That's why I started this podcast as well, because we need to, to, to show people that it's, if, like you said, if you mentally can say, I can do it, then you can do it. You know, that is such a, a powerful thing that you said, man. Um, a lot of people say, no, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. And then, yeah, there's no point for you to start because you are already negative. You're already thinking negative. Instead You're already of, feeling if you, if you can't do it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. If you change those words to say, I can do it, let me try at least, you know, hmm. let, let me, let me put myself in that situation where I can at least attempt to do something different. You know, it, it, it's so powerful. You know, those the, the I can't, the no's, all those negative words uh, attract negative. I'm also a, a big believer on 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 if you throw something negative out there, it's going to come back negative. You know, it's kind of like the what they call the law of attraction. Law you know, of attraction. If you if you if you think positive, good things will come. You know, if you say, hey, you know what? I saw Rob do something cool. I saw Hayden do something inspiring. Let me try what they're doing. Let me change. And eventually it's going to come back in, in a more positive form, you know? So mm -hmm. it's, it's awesome, dude. It, 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 it makes me happy to hear that. And again, hopefully someone sees this and, and, you know, wants to try, wants to give it a genuine try. And like you said, you don't have to change everything all at once. I'm pretty sure when you started your your weight loss journey, maybe you decided to do one thing and then you saw that it was going well. You know what? Well, let me incorporate this thing. And then all of a sudden, I'm pretty sure your 
100% eating healthy, you are taking care of yourself, sleeping well, everything that starts piling up, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. it's it's awesome, dude. And and with 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 that, you know, I did have a question and it was like what what motivates you to keep pushing yourself to improve as, as a runner and for the for this example. So, for me, I know how far I've come. Mm -hmm. And kind of one of my mantras is I didn't come this far to only come this far. Okay. So I know that I'm still at not the best me that I possibly could ever be at. And I strive mm -hmm. to be the best me I can be. That's awesome. And, 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 you know, there's always room for improvement. So that's the greatest thing. Um, that's what I tell my, my daughter, she's about to graduate high school. And, um, I just tell her, you know, um, you just have to continue to push, push yourself, learn something new, you know, reinvent yourself kind of, you know, and, and, and the moment, the day you get to the point where you say, this is, I've already reached what I wanted then there's really not much to, to live for, for example, you know, uh -huh. and that's why you just, you know, when you say I'm not a best version of my life or where I want to be, it's not, it's not that you're, you're not doing well. It's just that you want to continue pushing that, that, that bar, you know, mm -hmm. you want to continue once you get to that point, like, you, like, for example, your marathon, you did a 314 and then a 304 and then a 240. It's not going to stop there. I'm sure you're going to try to push push it to less than that, you know, and mm -hmm. and and that just keeps you, you know, motivated, keeps you pushing for something that you have in mind, you know. So that's awesome, dude. That's that's very very awesome. Um also I I don't want to take too much of your time. I know it's already like it's been over 50 minutes and so sorry, dude. You're fine. Um, um at this point we do want to take some time um uh we as a tradition that we have we our previous um guest, which was Ray, he had a question for you, which is the the next guest, right? So we'll go ahead and give him a, a chance to uh, uh say his um question and then right after that you can answer, okay? Awesome. What brings you joy during the run? So for for me, um you know, running typically I'm at the park, mm -hmm. uh which is peaceful yeah uh you know you see so many other runners out there mm -hmm. doing the same thing that you're doing um and seeing everybody there together um okay. you know it's probably my favorite thing about running you know um being out sometimes i hit the trails um you know listening to the birds chirp listening to nature is yeah you know i grew up grew up out in nature and uh, every chance i get to be out in it i enjoy it no yeah no i i hear you man and that that was kind of like my quest my answer as well i i i i i just love being up being outdoors you know um the every second that i get to be outside uh I, i'll be outside if you were to ask me would you rather be inside? No, I'd rather be outside. I, it doesn't matter how hot it is or how cold it is. It's just, you know, the little things that, that bring you joy to me, you know, and, and, you know, seeing the outdoors, um, you know, sometimes being able to see the wildlife, you know, just, you know, it, it, it it's amazing, man. It's amazing. And sometimes I feel like some people, I think it's not much runners. I think it's more non runners that really, forget about you know the simplicity of life you know you know uh, we're, we're stuck on the the phone and 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 taking pictures and and doing all these things which i get it and we live in a social media life but man sometimes putting that phone down and and enjoying nature man how beautiful is nature i don't know if you've have you seen um a, a documentary uh that um how, what's his name, man? I totally drew, blew a blank. It's they talk about uh, Texas. I think it's on 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 um, Apple TV. Um, it's McConaughey. There you go. He narrates it, and he's talking about how beautiful our nature is in Texas. You know, and talks about all these animals that are extinct that you know that we're trying to bring back. And man, it made me think, man, 
how many parks are there out there, you know, national parks, local parks that are beautiful. And, and we're over here sitting and wasting our time when we could be out there enjoying it, dude, like that, that nature to me is amazing. And that's what I love to do. So I, I love that you said that, 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 you know, small burst chirping, you know, just the small, just the, something so simple as that is 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 amazing you know so yeah I, and I, I think that's why we're runners man who i think most runners i could talk for most runners that's what we love you know we love being outdoors we love nature we love feeling the cool air the hot air whatever whatever it is you mm -hmm. know just being out there and enjoying it so man that that's awesome kudos for you again um and great answer and with that uh part of the um part of the tradition is um do you have a question for our what would be our uh 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 episode seven yeah seven yeah if there was one piece of advice you could give to a new runner what would it be that's a good one that's a good one and and uh, uh, last tradition man i just got tradition uh, tradition here <laughs> the last one is you gotta answer your question if I could give one piece of advice to a new runner, it would be to slow down, mm -hmm. enjoy it, mm -hmm. and trust trust the process. Enjoy the journey. Um, you know, yeah, you know, it's you know, you're headed from point A to point B, but enjoy everything in between because you only get that one time that that is so true man that is so true and and i wish my my the newbie rob would have he heard that because when i started running i totally did the the op the same thing you mentioned earlier uh that you got to run fast to get faster that's exactly what i did for like the first maybe year and that only took like three months before i got hurt you know because i was mm. every every run i was like okay i gotta hit eight minutes eight minutes eight minutes oh. eight minutes you know what i mean and then it became boring not not boring I, I take that back it wasn't boring it was a struggle because i was not recuperating as fast mm -hmm. so after maybe day two or day three of running and me thinking i gotta go out there and run really fast i my legs were dead i did not feel it you know and Yes, I 100% agree. Take your time. Enjoy the process. Run slow if you got to run slow. Take take a couple walks in between. No nobody's judging you. And and it's it's important to do that as a new runner because um you get one of those bad injuries and then you don't want to do it anymore and then mm -hmm. that's it. You 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 just move on because you know, you, 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 you have such a bad experience, you know, from running. So yes, take your time, go slow, do whatever you got to do. Enjoy the process, which, um, I've happened to love that part now, enjoying the process of whatever you're training, whatever you're doing. So yeah, that's awesome, dude. Um, and, um, at this point, Hayden, uh, we always give our guests a time to, uh, first, uh, give us where we can find you, what, what, what social media platform you use, um and also what what races do you have coming up so you can find me on facebook mm -hmm. um hayden lightfoot um uh, instagram lightfoot hayden um, okay uh you can find me on strava i'm, I'm on all social media platforms awesome um, awesome races coming up so chicago in october yeah. mm -hmm. um and Fargo Marathon June first. Oh, nice, 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 nice. And um, I, you did mention one thing, and I didn't want to forget. Um, you said you you ran New York, you ran Chicago. Are you gonna try to go for the majors, or it's just you know a coincidence that you got into those? <laughs> so, I, yes, I think I I am definitely going for the majors. Um, okay, it, uh, it was unintentional how it started <laughs> out because I just kind of ran <laughs> Chicago and then. Then I qualified for New York, so I had to run New York. Of course. And so now I'm chasing the Berlin qualifier. Okay. Uh, and then once I do that, then I'll, I'll start working overseas. Uh, and how about Boston? Have you qualified already for Boston? Yeah, so I, I qualified in January um, for Boston. I'll be there next year. 
Oh my God, dude. That's awesome. We'll, we'll definitely be cheering you on, man. Um, I might be in Boston, but, uh, through a charity, um, because I, yeah, it's too fast for me uh, still, but charity, I, I love charity because at the same time you get you what you want, but you're also helping people out, you know, people that need it, you know, so, uh, no, no shame in that, but hopefully, hopefully, hopefully I'll, I, I might be seeing you out there and maybe you'll just pass me by <laughs> real fast. I'll be like, Oh, was that Hayden? <laughs> <laughs> But man, Hayden, I appreciate your time. It was an amazing time. We definitely will uh, keep in touch and uh, uh, keep track of what you're doing, man. Uh, good luck in Chicago. Good luck in Fargo. And um, you're always more than welcome to come back and, and chit chat with us here. But thank you very much, man. I, I definitely appreciate your time. And thank you for all, all, all the amazing little stories you got about your, your journey for sure. Thanks, Rob, for having me. Yeah, no problem, man. Have a good one. Yes, sir, you too.